following is presented by CrewRoundTable.com Podcast Network. Welcome to Hot Takes with Gino, an informal discussion of topics affecting those living in the greater Toronto area. For more information, visit CrewRoundTable.com. Welcome back, my friends, to the latest and greatest episode of Hot Takes with Gino, proudly presented by the Crew Roundtable Podcast Network. Hot Takes is the second show on the network, but of course it is number one in your hearts. Now, today we are going to discuss carbon ta- uh, carbon cap and trade, and this is going to uh, hopefully give you some information as to why everyone living in Ontario and eventually everyone living in Canada is about to be boned by the government. And you will not even know why. You'll be boned six ways from Sunday and eventually one day you'll just wake up and say, uh, um, oh, I, I don't know, something just does not feel right. I am just off. And then you'll go to the doctor and there'll be a battery of tests and assessments and eventually the results will come back inconclusive. Because that's what this carbon tax, or carbon, I keep wanting to say carbon tax. This is where the carbon cap and trade initiative, or some would say scheme, and others would say complete waste of time, is going to affect you as a consumer in Ontario. Everything that you touch, everything that you buy, everything that makes your life worth living is going to go up in price and it's going to be hidden from you. There will be tax on top of tax. Before we get to our main discussion, I do want to say that I encourage everyone, please go to crewroundtable.com where you can find links to subscribe to this show. If you subscribe to the main feed, you get you get the flagship uh, Crew Roundtable and you also get Hot Takes with Gino and some other shows that we have in the hopper, which we hope to debut early in 2017. So let's get to the meat of today's podcast. Let's get to the carbon cap and trade. So the cap and trade, what is it and how does it work? Uh, We are going to take most of our information today from two articles that I found online. Uh, One is from the Globe and Mail. Dot com and one is from ctvnews.ca. Uh, these are from early in 2017. These two articles do a very good job of simply explaining what cap and trade is and how that's going to affect the consumer, and that's what we're going to focus on here today. So cap and trade. Uh, cap and trade is a system where the government caps the total amount of carbon emissions allowed. What the government is going to do once those carbon emissions are capped, so a business can only generate so many units of carbon as they're going about their business. The government is going to issue permits to these companies, which will specify exactly how much carbon that company can burn. If the company wants to burn more, you can see where this is going, they buy extra permits. Now, they will not be buying extra permits from the government, they will be buying extra permits from other companies who maybe don't use all of their carbon cap, hence the cap and trade. The carbon emissions are capped and you can trade on the open market carbon credits that you as a business are not using. To give you an idea of some numbers, Ontario has set a greenhouse gas emissions cap of roughly 142 megatons for 2017. And because the government is trying to socially engineer companies using less carbon, which is something that the government should do. Um, They use the hammer of taxes and levies and now this cap and trade system. They have set that cap at 142 megatons for 2017 and the Ontario government is going to have that cap go down each year. So next year we don't know what it's going to be but it is going to be less than 142 megatons. This is where supply and demand takes over. Because the price of that carbon that a company is going to be able to sell will go up as the cap goes down. As the cap goes down, the amount of carbon that can be sold is going to hopefully decrease, creating scarcity in the market. So these carbon credits will be worth more. And then the market will price them accordingly. The government is going to cut the number of permits that it issues. And that, combined with the scarcity, 
of artificially lowering the cap will drive the price of carbon credits up. As of today, the floor price on carbon on those carbon credits is expected to be set between $17 and $18 per ton and this is in Ontario. So the government is setting up this system where they will be auctioning off carbon credits to companies for their initial allotment of carbon. So if you're a large company, you're involved in a lot of heavy industry, you know that you're going to need a lot of carbon credits, you go to these auctions and you purchase them directly from the government. The idea is some companies will cut their carbon emissions in order to make money by selling their extra permits, and other companies will cut emissions to avoid having to pay the price and buy more carbon permits or credits. That is, in a nutshell, how the cap and trade is supposed to work. Where is it going to work? What jurisdictions are there? Because we mentioned Ontario. Ontario has jumped the gun because the federal government in Canada is going to initiate a program at some point and it will either be imposed on the provinces or the provinces will be able to say we already have a system in place. So Ontario along with a couple of other provinces have already started their carbon cap and trade programs. The Ontario program is meant with the goal of having Ontario, Quebec and California, so the state of California in the United States share one market for all of their carbon permits. This is much more complex and not as transparent as a flat carbon tax. That's why I kept wanting to say carbon tax, because a carbon tax is something I would have been in favor of. Once we get into the mechanics of how this cap and trade carbon system is going to work, you'll see why the aforementioned boning is going to take place for everyone in Ontario and eventually in Canada. I can hear some people already trying to discover, well, where is the flaw in this system? It seems like a free market, choice-driven uh, solution to the, to the problem of pollution and uh, climate change and making companies responsible for their actions as they're acting in the marketplace. Well, the reason why this is not the best solution, why it is not an ideal solution, is because the government is not allowing a true free market to reign. There are many reasons why this is a terrible idea. We'll start with this one. At the beginning of the program, permits, so carbon permits, the same things that people have to buy for seven, between $17 and $18 per ton, these permits are going to be given for free. So let's stop for a second, let that sink in. These permits will be given for free to certain businesses such as aluminum producers in Quebec, some of the biggest polluters are getting a free pass at the beginning of this system so that they will not pull up stakes and go to a jurisdiction where they don't have to play this carbon game. The government is gaming this system, is rigging this game, this cap-and-trade game, from the very get-go. The justification is we don't want to hit these companies with these giant costs right away. We want to give them a chance to adjust. We want to give them a chance to change their practices and give them a chance to uh, fully come to terms with the new business environment of a cap and trade environment. I don't buy that for a second. You're giving aluminum production in Quebec money because you're essentially giving them free money with these with these carbon credits because you don't want to chase them out of the province. You are scared that they are going to go somewhere where they will not have to put up with this silly cap and trade system. The very fact that you are giving away free credits at the beginning shows that you know that this is a harebrained scheme. And by you I'm talking directly to the government. You know that this is a harebrained scheme when you are pulling this type of move before the game even starts. The biggest polluters get a free pass. Ontario is giving a free pass to most of the companies it chooses until 2020. Three years of freedom to do as they wish and then still decide at the end of that time, 
if they want to pull up stakes and leave. So really, all you're doing is you're giving them three years worth of notice to decide if these companies actually want to stay in Ontario or if they're going to go someplace else that's more, uh, uh, that, that, that's more conducive to their business practices. There is no free pass that is given to the end consumer. You, me, and everyone else getting boned starts paying right from the first day. I'm sure you remember the news articles about, oh, well, gas is going up four cents a liter. You're going to have to pay $20 more or, or $100 more, whatever it is for your home heating. Uh, that went up on January 1, 2017. There's no free pass for you as the consumer. No one's giving you time to adjust. No one is giving you time to get your financial affairs in order and decide if you want to deal with these carbon credits. You're just paying an extra 4.3 cents a liter or whatever it is every time you fill up. You just pay. And that is not fair. That is not fair to anyone. And that's only the cost that you can see. That's only the cost that you can feel. That's only the cost that you can see leaving and feel leaving your pocket that wasn't there on December 31st, 2016. We'll get to where those hidden costs are coming from later. I kept wanting to say carbon tax at the beginning of the episode. Carbon tax is better. Why? Why is a carbon tax better? Because it's transparent. If there's a carbon tax, the government just simply sets a price on carbon. Everyone who buys a product that creates those emissions have to pay for it. There's a, there's a province that does this right now, British Columbia. They have a carbon tax of $30 per ton. When you do the math, according to the articles that we're dealing with here, it works out to about $0.07 cents a litre for gas in British Columbia. At least that is something that you can follow. Okay, That is something that you can make sense of and say, well, the government is setting a price. It applies equally to everybody. Everybody pays it. No one gets a free ride. Tax is collected, and it's trackable by the government for carbon emissions. They, the government wants people to use or to emit less carbon. You, the government raises the price of the carbon tax, not the market. And the government does it because that's their job to decide and be stewards of where they want people in the province to go. In theory, people cut their carbon use over time to avoid paying the tax. Very simple. Now, it's rare that you'll hear me argue in favor of a tax, but I would rather pay a simple and transparent tax than playing this shell game of carbon cap and trade where the only losers are the consumers every single damn time the end consumer you and me we are the only losers in this game if you have a tax it's relatively easier it's relatively easy to administer straightforward everyone pays the same price to burn the carbon but it doesn't set that cap on emissions. And that cap, that artificial cap that the government's going to take down every year from 142 megatons, and it will simply go lower every year, the government doesn't have that option. Because people, under a tax system, they can simply keep pumping out carbon into the atmosphere, and they say, well, I can afford, I can afford the tax. But those carbon credits in Ontario get more and more expensive. And those carbon credits that are going to fly down to subsidize industry in other jurisdictions, like Quebec and most notably California, because California can afford to buy all the carbon credits. You're going to have industry in Ontario working at a disadvantage because they will be trying to lower their carbon emissions. And in California, the companies are going business as usual, and they're picking up all the slack. They don't even have to lower their emissions. They just have to buy the carbon credits from us. Now, that you, So you might say, well, great, so the companies in Ontario are going to be getting money for their carbon credits. Yeah, they'll be getting money for their carbon credits. So is every company going to be a, set up as a long-term carbon credit seller? Is that how we want industry to work in this country? No, we want industry to actually produce something of value. We don't want to be just slinging paper carbon credits through the air electronically to California. We want people to have jobs here. We want people to have industry here. We want people, to, or we want companies to be here and be productive and contribute to Ontario. 
the government should just simply set the price and hope that consumer behavior does the rest. But it is now setting up an intermediary market where companies can go and get these carbon credits and the end consumer doesn't really have access to do that. The end consumer cannot participate in that in any way. These companies will be gaming the system. The government has already started gaming the system. The government already set up uh, set up back doors in the system right from day one, as we saw with our example of aluminum production in Quebec. These governments or these companies here are going to look at our provincial government in Ontario, and they are going to see that the provincial government in Ontario was recently called out by the Auditor General for mismanagement of funds. And the Ontario government has absolutely zero plans to address these issues. They have zero ideas on how they are going to address those issues from the Auditor General. So we have the Auditor General calling out the Ontario government. How well do you think the government is going to monitor a cap and trade system when it's supposed to be an open market? How do you think they're going to measure baseline carbon consumption? How do you think they set 142 megatons? Do you have any confidence that they picked that they didn't just randomly pick that number out of the air? How are they going to monitor if those initial carbon readings are correct, which govern the market? Companies are going to see this, and they are going to try and break the cap and trade system before it even gets started. Here's one simple way that they can do it, and the articles do a good job of uh, explaining these different ways that the companies are going to try and skirt around the system. One of the ways, companies can over-report the amount of carbon that they're burning to begin with. If they do, then the, gov then the government sets these caps too high, and they haven't achieved any significant reductions in carbon emissions, because they've been counting on the companies themselves to report the amount of carbon that they, it, that they expel. And the government does not have time to go out and check all of these numbers. That's why these companies themselves are doing it. So they are already moving the floor before the first carbon credit has even been issued. The government allocates these permits and it allows the government to pick winners and losers, which we've already mentioned. If one company's industry has a great lobbyist, it could convince the government to give them more of a free pass and get more free permits those results are potentially unfair. This is not a blanket tax applicable to everyone. It is what government wants to see succeed and if they are lobbied successfully by powerful companies in certain market sectors, those sectors will have an advantage in the carbon cap and trade market. They will be allowed to continue business as usual while other companies will suffer the full brunt of the cap and trade because they don't get free credits. Once again, a blanket tax applicable to all would be the most fair and equitable and transparent solution to this. But no government is going to be so bold as to introduce a simple tax to address what it claims to be a simple and obvious issue of climate change. This simple issue of climate change, which is a fact, and everyone believes it in the government, and everyone should believe it, because if all you have to do is look around yourself for anecdotal evidence, as, as my friend JR you, uh, coined, coined the term anecdata, you can look around and see that, okay, something is happening with our environment. It needs to be addressed. But if this simple issue of climate change requires a hidden and obtuse cap-and-trade system to encourage less carbon usage amongst the heaviest of all polluters, there is an issue with the cap and trade system. Something is going on, we are not aware of it. And whatever the government is telling us, it is not true. Whatever system they are setting up, whatever dog and pony show they are setting up, this supposed free market with free credits given out so that the government can pick the winners and losers, this is not right, it is not fair, and it's going to affect you. It is not going to affect you in a good way. It is not going to affect you in the way that it affected millionaires who received money from the government to go out and purchase electric vehicles. 
speak about that in just a second. The government is saying that they are going to build charging stations for electric vehicles. They're going to retrofit some social housing, which sounds like good ideas, but instead of building these charging stations where private industry can build these charging stations, the government is not the one who set up a gasoline station on every corner. You've got the infrastructure there. Pass a law saying that every gasoline station has to, has to be able to charge vehicles, and suddenly you've got the infrastructure in place. No, what the government has done instead is, instead of subsidizing the cost of an electric vehicle for the common man, instead of subsidizing the cost of an electric vehicle for you and I, what they've done is they've gone ahead and they have subsidized the cost of electric vehicles for millionaires. They have gone and subsidized people purchasing BMW i8s, Fisker Karmas, Tesla Roadster convertibles. These are $100,000 and up cars, and they have subsidized the cost of these vehicles for people who do not need the money to purchase these vehicles. And the amount of vehicles that have been sold, so the 100 or so vehicles in 2016 that were subsidized, the government had to be shamed and called out on it to change this program. So the government didn't know that this was going on. The Ontario government gave money to millionaires to buy cars. Think about that. The Ontario government gave money to millionaires to buy what are essentially new toys for them to tootle around in. You and I get boned. And the, and the Ontario government had to be shamed into saying, well, okay, we're going to have to take a look at this program and maybe set a cap on the amount of money that we give out. And these are the people that are going to be setting up a market for carbon credits that are going to be measuring the carbon that's in the atmosphere. These same yahoos are going to be the ones that are setting up this carbon market, this cap and trade system, when in Ontario and Quebec, the last two auctions that they had for carbon allowances, the markets crashed. These are the yahoos that we are going to be entrusting the cap and trade market to that are going to be picking the winners and losers that are going to be building charging stations for cars that no one is buying because you're not giving them incentive to purchase these vehicles why are you giving money to millionaires to buy cars when you could be giving that money to the average joe you could be giving that money to me to go out and buy a electric vehicle that i can afford today you get a bunch of people like me going out and buying vehicles, there'll be damn more than a hundred cars that you subsidize to buy for some millionaire that where the car is basically sitting in a garage all day or doing whatever the hell it's doing uh, for these people that don't need money to go and buy electric cars. I, I can't even fathom the stupidity of this. And here, here, friends of the show, here, is the number one reason why this is just the most boneheaded idea that the government could come up with. According to the government, according to the federal government, Ontario is pumping out less carbon than it did in 1990. Let that sink in. Since 1990, Ontario is already putting out less carbon. Without any of these cap and trade schemes, Ontario has already reduced its carbon emissions. W Ontario is reining in its carbon emissions. So why are we putting Ontario companies in contests with other jurisdictions, with Quebec and with California, when we are already doing a good job? We are already leading the pack. We have a competitive advantage. And the government is throwing away that competitive advantage, that history of excellence in Ontario industry. The government is throwing that away to join this overall market for cap and trade. How does this make any sense? How can anyone point to this program point to the history, the short history that we've seen so far from this Ontario government. How can anyone point to the history of carbon emissions in Ontario, verified by the federal government of all people, and think that this cap and trade system is the way to go? It makes zero sense. 
So when you're filling up at the gas pump and you're paying that extra 4.3 cents and you're paying tax on top of a hidden input into the business cycle that has been arbitrarily placed there by the government, when you are paying tax on top of tax for everything that you purchase because at some point everything that you buy was on a truck. Heavy industry has had a hand in everything that you purchase at some point in your life. So it's not just 4.3 cents at the pump per liter. It's not just an extra 100 to 150 dollars that you're paying on your home heating bill. It's not the price of a cup of coffee a day, as the government likes to jam down your throat. That always seems to be the the go-to uh, example for comparison. It's about the price of a cup of coffee a day. I mean, why would anyone why would anyone begrudge that? Blah 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 blah. blah. No, uh, you are paying more. You are paying significantly more for everything that you purchase. Your purchasing power is about to go down the toilet. And everyone in this country is getting boned six ways from Sunday. And now at least you know why. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this edition of Hot Takes with Gino. I encourage you all to go to crewroundtable.com where you can sign up, subscribe to our feed. We are on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, everywhere that fine podcasts are sold and distributed. You can sign up to us. Please subscribe and share the show with your friends. We also have a new Facebook page. I encourage you to go there and uh, like us for updates. As I said, we've got a couple of new shows in the hopper that we're going to be debuting early in 2017. They will be on the main feed. Please, as I said, visit crewroundtable.com for all updates. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves, everyone.